Hi, I'm Richard. I'm Daniela. Welcome, Welcome to, to our home. home. My name is Richard Hammond. Uh, I'm an architect living in Costa Rica. My name is uh, Daniela Hammond. I'm an architect and uh, co-founder of uh, Inverse Projects. What was here originally was two small buildings. The, the building was never finished, it was actually in a state of ruin. And that's really, uh, what, that's how we found it. We came to visit pretty much every spare moment to just sit in this open, empty structure just to look out. It helped us envision this building to be open and inviting to build this indoor-outdoor connection. The site sits on the side of a small valley. So it has views inside the valley, but also the surrounding mountains. There's also a glimpse of the city beyond. So the, all those, those elements we wanted to take into account. When you come to the property, you walk down the stairs and then you enter the building and you walk down the stair again to actually go down to the lower levels all connected in one flow. The big red doors were functioned sort of as the frame to look out into nature. And the red color is based on um, the vibrant color you find here in Costa Rica. I think one of the biggest things was just reusing the existing structure that was here. We had talked about demolishing it, but we felt like by keeping it, there's a lot of embodied energy in, a, in an existing, especially concrete structure, which this is. Also things like LED lighting and solar hot water, those were, were also very important energy reducing tactics. So even though we have a lot of windows, um, just by opening doors and, and windows, cross ventilation will keep the house naturally cool. Yeah, the design of the uh, interior stair was really the idea to make it feel as light and sculptural as possible. So we decided to just um, follow the steps and have a 15 centimeter steps just uh, going all the way down without any guardrail, knowing that it might not be a good idea for a little bit, but we thought it was a um, good design. Throughout the house, we use plywood a lot. It's inexpensive yet, it has this very interesting look. You have the, the wood color on the side, but you also have this interesting edge details. We turned this into a feature uh, in, throughout the house. Most of our built-in furniture and millwork pieces are made of plywood. For simplicity, we like this, this um, flow uh, throughout all the spaces without any interruptions. And it's actually fantastic for the kids because they can use their scooters and uh, uh, roller skates in the house. Above the uh, studio we have a, a, a living roof um, which is planted with, with, uh, with a garden um, and that really becomes an outdoor um, a place for, for you know, just hanging out and enjoying the view. But also it thermally keeps the, the, the room very stable below it and also has a play, it absorbs water and it retains water. Place solar hot water heaters on the roof of the house, which is a very efficient way to heat water. And in Costa Rica, we have a lot of sunlight, so it makes a lot of sense. It takes care of all the, the showers, the dishwasher, um, all, all the hot water needs of the house. Um, so, uh, you know, I recommend it for everyone. That you, sh you should put that on your house. One of the main things we enjoy here is experiencing nature. It's a very inspirational home just because it's in some ways it's uh, an escape. I'm Jeff Waldman. I am an electronic systems technician. And I'm Molly Pfeiffer. I work for a nonprofit. Live in San Francisco mostly, but hang out here. The whole idea was to build a space or create a space or have friends contribute to a space where we can learn together, experiment together, build together. Getting a yard or having more space wasn't really feasible in the city of San Francisco. The very first thing we built was a table. It's like if you show up at a campsite, like that's at least the thing that they give you. All the clearing we've done by ourselves, all the tree cutting we've done by ourselves, all the milling we've done by ourselves, um, the cabin that we are sitting on was designed by us. The exterior is made of redwood that we got from a local sawyer. And what we did to it is um, we sprayed it with a material called eco wood. The deck is made of redwood. This is basically what redwood looks like just left on its own. It was really important to us to have a very spacious, light-filled interior. When you come in, the reason the loft doesn't extend all the way to the front of the building is we wanted the light to come in through the front of the building and bounce into the back. Uh, the interior walls are birch plywood. All of the trim is birch. 
The timbers that are exposed are dug fir. The cost-saving measure on the kitchen was instead of doing it out of cabinets, we used this industrial wire shelving. The cooler slides out on casters. We actually measured the cooler and caster height to ensure that it would fit underneath the sink. IKEA lights that we mounted right into some electrical conduit, all solar powered. We have three panels right about here on the outside of the roof. My favorite spot is sitting on that bed. Wake up in the morning, right in front of you is this big square window framing the view of the valley. There's this big dug fir, redwoods on either side. Most mornings, like there's some fog ribbons running through. My favorite thing in the cabin right now is the ladder that goes up to the loft. Um, I think it's really special that we were able to use some of the materials that we felled and milled ourselves. Something we wanted to provide for people was one, a nice hot shower, and two, like a decent bathroom. Yeah, it was also cool to have the opportunity to build our first like sink. Pit toilet. This is like stick on wallpaper that we found online. My really good friend gave this to us. It says, outstanding achievements and friendship, Molly Pfeiffer and Jeff Waldman, back to back champions of land. <laughs> Soy Miguel Ángel Aragonés, nací en la Ciudad de México. Empecé a trabajar hace aproximadamente 36 años ejercitando arquitectura. Yo creo que lo mejor de la arquitectura no la puedes fotografiar. Creo que la buena arquitectura es de trayectos, es de circulaciones, es de vivencia, es de aromas, es de, es de sensación, ¿no? Hace quizá como 10 años compré esta propiedad. Empecé el proyecto con la idea de hacer un ejercicio para encontrar un cliente naturalmente, pero se vio interrumpido este proyecto por otra obra muy importante que teníamos en Los Cabos, que requería todo nuestro enfoque y toda nuestra atención. Y nos desvinculamos con la Ciudad de México y nos desvinculamos con este trabajo. Lo dejamos un buen número de años. Cuando regresé eh, es cuando ya decidí que nos íbamos a quedar esta casa para nosotros. Son cuatro espacios distintos. Los lotes eran unos rombos que sugerían meter rombos para aprovechar al máximo el espacio natural del terreno. ¿no? Y la verdad es que yo creo que el, 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 los proyectos son así. ¿no? Son muchas veces la forma es circunstancial porque realmente la, la que manda es la circunstancia del sitio para que tú te ejercites eh, en un, con una idea. ¿no? Y aquí lo que mandaba era por obvias razones la forma del terreno, un rombo, y por obvias razones la naturaleza propia del terreno, que eran sus verdes. ¿no? Y si a mí me dices aquí cuál es el material más presente, te digo que el verde. Es como un respeto al entorno natural y, y tratar de que ese entorno natural sea tu componente principal con el que proyectas. Que hay aquí también luz. El blanco recoge el humor del, del sol, ¿no? del cielo, y lo refracta y la casa tiene la intensidad de luz que el sol le regala. ¿no? Entonces, dejar ser ese tipo de eventos al interior de tu espacio o utilizarlos como tu material, pues me parece así como vital. Quizá lo que más disfrutamos es la vivencia en general. Digo, aquí trabajo todo el día en mi estudio contiguo y luego salir y refugiarte aquí y el, y el olor de la comida y, y, el, y este flujo de viento y lo que sucede con la luz. Ahí radica el verdadero poder de la arquitectura, esa envolvente diaria de elementos que te reconfortan. I'm Clinton Cole, I'm the director of a C-plus C architectural workshop. I'm the architect and builder of Welcome to the Jungle House, a home for my family of five. So the original building was a shop-top terrace so in the 40s and 50s. It was 
actually a corner store. The building fell into disrepair. I remember it being almost derelict when I started attending the university up the road in the early 90s. The building has a familiarity to many people we speak to. They're really happy that we've retained the existing facade and it had, I guess, a contextual meaning uh, historically to, to many people who live in the area. One of the systems which visitors find most intriguing is the aquaponics system. We've got 60 silver perch sitting outside my kids' bedroom windows. The fish water is pumped to the roof where the vegetables and the fruit consume the nitrogen-rich bacteria which grows from the pond water. That then filters through clay beads and the soil uh, and is drained back down to an underground tank. From there, it's pumped through a filter back to the fish pond. So it's a closed loop system in terms of the water cycle. Growing fruit and vegetables and, and fish uh, on site and harnessing water and power, uh, in a way it's returning the building to its former use um, as, as a corner shop of sorts. One of the unplanned benefits that we've gained from the house is the excess food that we're producing. We're sharing with neighbours and with friends. So it's really brought the community together. It's allowing us to connect with people in, in a different way. We've really tried to embrace technology in terms of data capture. So the wind and solar data is captured, the irrigation is connected to the internet, so it adjusts uh, according to temperature and climatic conditions. One of the difficulties that architects have is communicating their value. And we believe capturing data in terms of the performance of a building is a fantastic way to communicate the value uh, that we can add to a client's project. Now, one of the things I was really cognizant of when I was designing the project was the way in which the public consume architecture and they mostly consume it through the media. So making the sustainability and the regenerative attributes of the architecture exist in a symbiotic way with the architecture itself was really important. So it's perceived as aspirational. Look, there's clearly never been a more important time in history for architecture to be sustainable, uh, to be regenerative, um, you know, the future generations and, and indeed my children's future was at the forefront of my mind when I was designing this home.